Hey everyone, there was another mass shooting, this time done by a 68-year-old Asian man in Half Moon Bay, California, just 48 hours after the horrific Monterey Park incident. And honestly, this just got everybody wondering what the hell is going on. Rest in peace to everyone. This is GoFundMe right here. It has been verified. I mean, I think anything, anytime something like this happens on the heels of the Monterey Park incident, there's so many internet comments all across the board, but it's important that we break some of them down and we give our takeaways on this situation because, you know, it's really important that, like, somebody cuts through the noise. Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, we're going to be very thoughtful and analytical here, and we're not here to spread some crazy misinformation and conspiracy theories. It's a lot of noise, so it's important to have this conversation, even though it's not going to be fun, um, and we're not monetizing this video or anything like that, but uh, we just think... It is important, you know, even though it's hard. So I guess uh, one of the main questions, the main question that everybody's asking right now because they're finding a common thread um, is, is what, David? What is going on with like disgruntled, mentally disturbed 65 plus year old Asian men, right? Because we're referring to uh, the Monterey Park incident. Uh, Half Moon Bay and Laguna Woods. There is a common thread here, Andrew. We're talking about people that are single, whether they were divorced, you know, previously or not. No children. They're down on their luck. They've been off the grid. Uh, they may be broke or in financial distress. No children. Mm -hmm. And um, these, it's just like a holding pat. I mean, it's like the same pattern you're seeing in everything. Yeah, and uh, you know what you just described is also the recipe or the background of a lot of other mass shooters, to be honest, of any background, any race or ethnicity. Except right? the age part. And right. Obviously, and, the Asian part is like a newer thing. Yes, them being Asian uh, and specifically of the Chinese diaspora, whether that's a Taiwanese background, Chinese Vietnamese background, or a Chinese background, uh, they are 65 and older, and so that's the common thread, and it is kind of weird. I'm yeah. not going to lie. It's interesting. And I got to say... It is a tiny, 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 tiny fraction yes. of the community. But like you said, people are noticing a pattern, right? And uh, I think people all felt picked on in some respect. I was looking into the stories a little bit. Um, but that is also a common thread, right? Whether people felt uh, picked on in their micro daily in real life or politically in a more macro, like big picture sense or both. Mm -hmm. Moving on to number two, Andrew, the, uh, another comment. And of course, anytime something like this happens, human nature is they're going to be self-interested, right? This was sort of a very selfish perspective, but it was a real perspective. Some white people were really glad to see saying, uh, oh, see, it's not always a young male white supremacist despite the stereotype that we have. Right, and now the stereotype is because the majority of mass shooters in America are still white males. Young white men, yeah. actually. And, and that's the truth, right? However, I think they're just pointing at like the kind of, I guess, exceptions or anomalies that have happened recently and which we are all taking note of and that's why we're having this discussion here because it is notable. It's not like, yo, just sweep this under the rug. We're like, yo, it's happened a few times. Like, let, let's talk about it, man. Um, this other perspective that I saw pop up on a couple different platforms was, oh, look, these Asians aren't these perfect, nerdy, docile mathletes that we've been led to believe. And um, sometimes this came even from like other minorities, you know, it yeah. basically was a perspective of like, you know, I feel like our groups get vilified in the media on a consistent basis. Oh, huh, look yeah. at these perfect no. Asians, right? Listen, I, I think that's a human emotion. And statistically speaking, Asians are still very, very low uh, on the violent crime rate. I mean, the lowest still um, of the Asian group. But also, I, we all know that Asians are not a monolith, okay? And Asians are not all the same. And Asians are not the mono minority yeah. um, because there's a lot of Asians that don't fit into that. Right, so. and despite, you know, what gets put out in the media and people selectively hear this or selectively hear that, even two people could hear different things. Um, obviously, everybody has good, bad, and people who plot chart, like, in the middle between good and bad. Like, every group has that. But obviously, lately, we've just started to see more of the bad. Mm -hmm. um, I saw different theories on both sides. One, that this was an NRA ploy to drive up gun prices and sales due to potential bans. Or I also saw another theory that this was a government ploy so they can ban all guns so they could take control of the populace. So it kind of goes to show you both sides of the political spectrum, and I'm not talking about, I'm talking about fringe elements probably on both sides are trying to jujitsu this 
for their own personal agenda, right? Right, right, right. And and literally, it can be doing both things, which are actually opposing, because that's it. Just matters on your perspective. On and this then uh, staying in the conspiracy lane right now, because obviously this is very trendy in 2023. Obviously, the closeness of the incidents lends itself to more conspiracy theories. We're talking about comments about MK Ultra brain control, which is brain chipping, sleeper cells, psyops. You know, something sort of like Kingsman, the movie where it was like turning the good guys bad by flipping a switch and just all types of stuff. And I'll say this. Listen, I get it. I think conspiracy theories are both not only fun, but creative. That's why people like them so much. But I think that oftentimes most conspiracy theories pretty much detract from the actual work that needs to get done. Yeah. And let's be honest, guys. Uh, if you if, they're, if this is the first time that they're saying this conspiracy theory for mass shooters and they didn't say it after all the other types of people had mass shootings, white, black, Latino, like they all did theirs. And but that wasn't a conspiracy. But now it's a conspiracy because Asians are doing it. And and just because you don't imagine Asians to be the ones to do it right. It is a little bit of it's a, it's a little bit of a paradigm shift, I admit. But just because of that, then you're like, okay, yeah. now this is like some government ploy. And I like, understand it is human nature, especially on the internet, to like think it's like the, the a Tom Clancy novel or even more extreme or wild than that. But like I said, how are we going to address the structural yeah. fundamental issues that these type of terrible incidents stem from structurally? And sometimes it feels like people want it to be that fantastic conspiracy theory. And they kind of, want it to but be. If, and if it was, it would kind of absolve you of doing the painstaking, unsexy work, right? Exactly. Um... Of course, there were the classic arguments, obviously, as was with the Martin Ray Park incident about gun control at every level. You know, some people, I just think that on one side, it's just too late for America to become Australia and have everybody give up all their guns. And on another side, it's completely unrealistic and ridiculous to think that everybody's going to become an armed, trained vigilante, like do-gooder with a gun. Guys, trained people with guns make mistakes all the time. I can only imagine how many citizens would if they're not properly trained. So just keep that in mind. But yes. Uh, yeah, I just think this whole thing, it's so hyper-complicated. <laughs> yeah, but I of understand. course, people want to rehash the same arguments because because once you've had that argument, then you feel like you're like, oh, okay, well, I had it and you're tired out and you can kind of move on mentally. Right. Um, one of the other comments that I thought was more interesting was blaming it on the media, Andrew. Mm. They were saying the media always makes money off division, sensationalism, getting people to be scared of um, everything, and they just want to make profits and sell ads. And I will say this. When they brought in the uh, Half Moon Bay shooter, because he kind of sort of turned himself in at the mm. sheriff's mm. office, they have a camera crew right there, like it's Jerry Springer or the Kardashian show, and I will say that that is very shocking. Like, that is a very it's, shocking It's photo. weird. There's definitely some weird stuff going on, but I can't say that, you know, at the end of the day, guys, crime is going up from the past decade, even though it's not at the 90s and 80s level, okay? And then also mass shootings, statistically speaking, this is the data, it's at all-time high. So we're having a mass shooting, like, what, twice a month now right. in America? It's crazy. So I'm just saying, like... Yes, I get that the media does blow stuff up. We're in social media. I understand this. I don't love a lot of aspects about social media. Right. I didn't like how they were filming that that yeah. close. Yeah, it, it, and I could see where that conspiracy of it being a psyop comes from sure. now when you see that. But obviously, I also know the nature of the news media, how every cable channel is trying to report and get exclusives and even oh. pay people and, to get exclusive interviews just to maintain profitability because they're publicly traded companies. Yeah. Um, I do think this. I do think it is possible that Half Moon Bay was a copycat attack that was inspired by the media attention that the Monterey Park incident got. Sure. And that's why in Canada, it is illegal to release the name and the photo of mass shooters because they do not want that inevitable psychological effect on other people that are on the fence. There are some things that they do in Canada that I really think America should do, to be honest. I think it'd make it better, guys. But anyways, besides the point, listen, so... So we went through a lot of the popular comments and obviously I disagree with a lot of them and just logically some of them just make no sense. But um, we should talk about like what we're taking away because, you know, we kind of have a slightly different perspective. We're deep in the Chinese American community. We've thought a lot about this um, every time that a Asian person or a Chinese person has like done something heinous, like some heinous crime. I've we've I've kept up with it, you know, so I guess like. What is, what are some of our takeaways that, you know, I, I think that people out there should hear? I think that number one, mental health related work shootings have always been a fact of American life. Of all types of people. Yeah, literally uh, in the men, 80s and 90s, men. there was a whole term 
called Going Postal because the USPS had a string where like over 40 people ended up getting killed by fellow coworkers. Then USPS, in reaction to that, had a huge overhaul of their mental adequacy testing programs. Yeah, and I mean, listen, guys, if you want to look at the list, the data is out there. It happens at Walmarts, UPS, different warehouses. It happens on Army bases. It's, it's happened at so many different places of work from all different types of men, you know, and yes, most of them are men. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, to be honest, in a weird way, a workplace shooting is not the most uncommon thing in America, right? This, this so, does happen. Yeah, I don't know if, like, people are finding that ability in America or, like, what they would do. Let's just say, for example, they have the equal level of life dissatisfaction and mental illness in another country. Is it just a knife attack because the gun availability isn't there? But like right. we said, maybe, I mean, Maybe it I don't looks know. different, but, uh, you know, I, th I think... There are unhappy and broken men in every single country, of course. Right. But yes, it, it manifests itself differently based on just the structure of whatever yeah. country their game map that thing is exactly. existing in. David, there's this concept um, in China right now. Uh, can you explain it? Yeah, to people? it's called Bao Fu Shi Hui. Bao Fu is revenge. Shi Hui is society. So it's basically it translates in English revenge on society. This is actually like a common trope in China right now, and basically. It's people who have given up all sense of hope for themselves and want to take revenge on the society that gave them bad cards and a bad life. Mm -hmm. Like, they see no way out. And um, this has been tracked in China. Obviously, it's mostly men, even though there have been some women. And um, these sort of attacks, yeah, like, I guess they're just carried out, obviously, and this is not with a gun. Yeah, yeah. But I do want to say, like, you know, because a lot of these people are that are committing these crimes or involved in these um, incidences and... Uh, they are from the Chinese community. Yeah. And we know as like whether they're Chinese immigrants or Asian immigrants or whatever, like it's not that they just came over here and shed all the Asian culture. Like that stuff still might be relevant and still might apply. Right. It could be. And, and it's just like long story short, you know, China boomed. A lot of people got rich, but not everybody got yeah. a part of it. You know what I mean? Sure. So I mean, I mean, this guy's I mean, you know, he's 68 years old working on a farm. He, he clearly did not make it. And maybe that was wearing on him. And, and you know, obviously it's going to get to our next point, guys. Um, There's a lot of stuff that we don't know yeah. about. Trauma from upbringing from the motherland of the uh, underworld dealings, gambling debts, pre-diagnosed conditions, drug addiction, of course, mental illness. Like we've been stressing, those are going to compound those things 10x. Yeah. So you're going to take that multiple and hit it with another multiple. And just for some perspective, if you think about it, these people didn't just maybe bring trauma from the motherland over here when they immigrated, but maybe they experienced trauma in America. You know, maybe they had some really bad experiences. Um, the Laguna Woods shooter, he actually got attacked brutally before uh, he had he went out and lashed out at people. And that could have contributed to it because what happens is like for a lot of low income immigrants, they don't have good systems to heal. If one of us were to go through some type of trauma, we have a whole community. We have friends, we have family, we have, we're Americans. So we know how to work the systems and how to find healing and how to find that comfort. But a lot of these people, they don't, and this applies. They don't have to, even anybody yeah, to talk to. Yeah. They don't have friends or family. So this applies to almost any broken person in America that's low income, but especially immigrants because yeah. it's not their country and they're yeah. left out of the main systems. Yeah, sometimes they could be traumatized and then they're manifesting that trauma to pass it on to somebody else in the most toxic way <clears throat> possible. Yeah. Um, like you said, they can't fit into American society, so they can't even fit into like every, any normal like stress release outlet that people would have in America. Let's say if you're a born American, you go to the sports bar, you blow off some steam, you go play some sports. Yeah. Uh, you go blow off some steam. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, I know a lot of people, they go play basketball, soccer, they go practice martial arts in a group. Yeah. Together. Like you said, I mean, we have to understand the situation is like these, this guy was working at what some people believe was like an illegal grow house or cooking, yeah. you know, doing whatever. Right, right, right. We, and we're, uh, details are not confirmed, but I guess David, uh, we shared our thoughts. We talked about the main kind of comments floating around on the internet, but like, uh, what's your major takeaway? How do you want to wrap this up? On a policy level, I don't really know what to say because it seems like both sides have dug their heels in the sand. It's at a stalemate. I just don't even know what's working. I just got to focus on the micro level, what we can do and what people like, let's say, for example, in the Chinese community could do or the Asian community could do be like, just reach out to people. Mm -hmm. And just take another glance at somebody who looks like they're they could be detached or off the grid or like just no longer grounded. 
in regular society. Yeah. You know, I, one thing I know I always try to do is just give away food to homeless people. And, you know, obviously we live in an Asian area, so there's a lot of homeless Asian people. And I just try to look them, at the, look them in the eye yeah. when I hand them something. Just even to have that brief moment of humanity. Mm-hmm. I cannot change these people's situations yeah. or the cards they've been dealt in yeah. life, you know. But I could do a little something. Exactly. I mean, I think everybody can do something. I'm not asking people to bring these people into their homes and take care of them, giving housing. I, what I'm saying is that, you know, you smile, you talk to them. Um, yeah. And, and, it, can and do it, it can go a long way. And sometimes you have... And we have to. Be, it, sometimes it's not even a positive interaction. Sometimes, I tried to give a pair of shoes to somebody, a, like a homeless, you know, uh, Asian man last year, and he like tried to fight me. You know what I mean? But I have to accept that risk because I'm like, I understand like these people are just in a bad, and I don't know what they went through. Yeah, and, and you know, this is the world that we live in. I mean, just do what you can. Everybody does a little bit more. If everybody does three percent more, if everybody does three percent more. That's not just 3% more. That's a lot more yeah. for, you know, the world. And, uh, you know, just look for warning signs from people that you may know and check in on people, text them, message them, WeChat, whatever it is. Right, you that, know. that friend of an uncle or, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Like, everybody has an uncle, but it's not actually their, their, their biological uncle. Like, check yeah. up on them yeah. or, or ask somebody to check up on them. Like, yeah. the, the remo- one person yeah. removed. And, uh, yeah, you know, for me to close it off, obviously, you know, everybody in the comments below, let us know what you think about all this. Um, I know there's a lot of conspiracy theories. I know there's a common thread. I know people want to see patterns. And it's possible. It's possible. You know, I, I think some of them are linked together in some way, for sure. But I think, um, you know, it's just like we need, like, if we're going to have more guns in this country, we need more resources for mental health. Because we know mental health and guns going together is not a great recipe, right? So I, whatever... I, you can disagree with me or not, but I'm just saying we need more of these resources if we're going to get let more of these things in. If we're going to have more drugs, we got to have more drug testing sites, right? And make sure the drugs are better, right? And cleaner, right? If this is what we're going to do. Um, and if we're going to let people have guns, we got to check their mental a little bit better. For you know? sure. And I just think, I don't know, like I said, let us know what you think in the comments section below. The reason why, you know, some people had emailed us and said, oh, well, give me your uh, gun control policy opinions and i was just like dude it's not i'm just focused on what we can do yeah. send somebody uber eats like you know what i mean and small I, gifts. I just remember like at church growing up there was people that were kind of like this not to this level the, but that we you know to this, this half moon bay archetype at our church you know and it's never easy it's not an no. easy thing to do but but it's it's real work and that's what a community is you know um you see a loner kid you just talk to him you know you don't got to be the best i'm just saying just talk to him you know, and hang out. And uh, anyways, guys, uh, let us know in the comments down below. Um, again, hard stuff to talk about, but a necessary conversation. I hope it, I hope it was helpful in some way. Hope it provided some level of insight. Um, Beyond just what was available in the comments section. And, um, and, and yeah, media. I mean, I hope to not have to make <coughs> another video like this very soon. You know, let's just cross our fingers and pray. So, And remember, donate to the GoFundMe, guys. It is verified. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, we're the Hop Hop Boys. We're out.